We're breaking the silence today. It is time to talk about the best Disney World restaurants for 2023. And spoiler alert, many of these places you're going to be shocked to see on this list. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. As celebrations for the new year start to wrap up, it's time for you to get to your Disney World vacation planning. And a very important part of that is knowing which restaurants you're gonna wanna make reservations for, which ones you'll wanna hit up while you're on the go, and which ones will take less preparation on your end. And that's what today's video is all about. As we dig into all the different restaurants you're so gonna wanna put on your must try list this year, don't worry about needing to write down anything. We've got today's list of restaurants already typed up for you. Just drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash best eats 2023. And we'll send you a PDF of our 2023 favorite restaurants to your inbox immediately. But let's start with a restaurant category that's unpredictable at the moment. You'll see what I mean. We're talking about the new and somewhat mysterious stuff. Should these restaurants be on our best places to eat in 2023 list? We sure hope so. The anticipation is strong with these table service sit down locations, and we have some really high hopes for them. Though the restaurants in this category haven't opened yet, they're set to open sometime in 2023. And the reason they're on this list is because we know all of you, like us, want to try them. And at the very least, these restaurants will be fun to prioritize just because they're new and exciting and you'll be one of the first people to try them out. Let's start with Roundup Rodeo Bar Barbecue in Disney's Hollywood Studios. This is a new table service restaurant coming to Toy Story Land, aka Andy's Backyard. And this restaurant has been fickle. Originally, it was supposed to open at the end of 2022, but now we know 2023 is going to be its big debut year. But what will this restaurant be like when it finally opens up its barn doors? Roundup Rodeo Barbecue is going to take you into a rodeo arena created by Andy himself. He is such a creative little boy. Andy has taken some of his favorite games and play sets to create Western scenes with additional blocks and lights and cardboard cutouts, turning the dining room into a bright and colorful kids mashup. During Disney's video interview back in October 2022, they snuck us some quick looks at what may be coming to Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. During this preview, we saw glimpses of items on the tables like barrels of monkeys, containers of toy soldiers, and cow print napkins. We also saw glasses resembling mason jars and the classiest dishware of all time, porcelain paper plates. It's not a big mystery about what's going to be featured on the Roundup Rodeo menu. Expect a lot of barbecue. A lot. Despite there being a lot of different barbecue options around Disney World for you to turn to instead, we expect Roundup Rodeo to be in pretty high demand once it opens. So make sure to stay on top of those advanced dining reservations. You can make an advanced dining reservation at most Disney World restaurants up to 60 days before your trip. And these ADRs go live daily around 6 a.m. Eastern, though they've been known to drop earlier, like around 5.30 or 5.45. If you hear about Roundup Rodeo Barbecue's official launch date, which you will if you keep checking back here with the DFB crew and join our newsletter, then make sure you know when the soonest you'll be able to start booking dining reservations will be for your trip and mark that day on your calendar and set the alarms, many alarms, because it's going to be quite an early morning. Morning. As of right now, this restaurant is set to open in spring 2023, but spring could mean anything for Disney from random February date to June. So stay tuned to the newsletter. Next on our list is that cake bake shop by Gwendolyn Rogers at Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort. Disney has described their soon to be cake bake shop as a whimsical atmosphere that complements the magic of the idyllic charm of Disney's boardwalk that guests know and love. Which cool beans, that sounds like a good time to me. The cake bake shop will serve up savory items items like truffle palm frites, sandwiches, and quiche, sweet treats like pastries, pies, and uh, cake. And they'll also have an afternoon tea party where you can daintily clink your glasses and say cheers to your heart's content. I guess they're not glasses, they're teacups. Before this restaurant makes its grand debut in 2023, I'm gonna need you to check on a couple of things for me, okay? Okay, first thing, check out our review of the already existing cake bake shop that's out in Indianapolis, Indiana. We've got all the details of the review on our website, which I'll link down in the description below, but just so you know what our overall first impression was, we were impressed. <laughs> it's filling, the food we tried was all high quality, it's a beautiful environment with floral accents galore, it's very pink, and if I could make a trip back out to Indiana 
to just for one of those cakes right now, I would. The second thing I want you to do is check out our exclusive DFB interview with the Gwendolyn Rogers herself. Rogers talks in depth about her passion behind this project and makes us even more excited to see it come to fruition. I'll link that interview down below too. All right, Summer House on the Lake at Disney Springs. One more newbie for 2023, as far as we know. Summer House on the Lake is a modern table service with beachy, summery greenhouse vibes and a California-based cuisine. Much like the Cake Bake Shop, we've cheated with this one and have already gotten a literal taste of what the new Summer House on the Lake table service is going to have in store for Disney guests, since there are already Summer House locations in Chicago, Illinois, and North Bethesda, Maryland. On the Chicago menu, we found items like pizzas, sandwiches, salads, pasta, and wood-grilled dishes, so basically a plethora of options for all types of eaters. But for a more specific look at what we found out about this restaurant, for the sake of science, you can check out our review on the DFB website, which, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, I will also add to the video's description. All right, next on our list of the best restaurants in Disney World for 2023 are places literally nobody talks about. So we've got a confession to make. These restaurants don't come up in DFB videos all that often. But things have either changed a little bit with these, or even though they're pretty niche locations, we still want you to be aware of them, especially if you're planning a first ever Disney World trip. I'm going to start with the creperie at Epcot. Now, the Creperie de Paris in Epcot's France Pavilion is a crepe-centered table service where everything's made to order. You can get sweet crepes or savory galettes, or split both with someone at your table for the best of both worlds. And this one doesn't make it into our videos that often because you, you have to like crepes to eat here. And there's also so many more restaurants to talk about in Epcot, and especially Epcot's France, that this doesn't really get on the radar very often. So here's why we recommend this place. Reservations are fairly easy to make. Often we'll find reservations the last minute for the creperie, but sometimes we can just stroll over to the restaurant when we're in the neighborhood and find walk-up availability too. Pricing is reasonable here and gives you a lot of flexibility. You can order crepes and galettes in an a la carte fashion, but there's also a daily prefix menu for you to choose instead, with options including a choice of soup or salad, one savory galette, one dessert crepe, and a glass of hard cider, soda, or juice. You can go the prefix route for $35.95. And even if you don't want to stop and sit for a spell while you enjoy a crepe or two, you can always choose to order from its attached fast food location, Crepes à Importer, for easy crepes on the go, which will have different crepes you can choose from than La Creperie. So definitely look at both menus before you decide which location you want to go to. Next on our list of places we don't talk about enough. <laughs> <laughs> is Kusafiri Coffee Shop and Bakery at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Just outside the entrance of Kilimanjaro Safaris in the Africa section of the park sits a counter service that offers up sweet and savory treats and a place to hang your safari hat for a refreshing break. The menu at Kusafiri Coffee Shop and Bakery isn't huge, but you will be able to find quick bites for breakfast and unique snack options throughout the rest of the day, like the marinated chicken and pork flatbreads and spiced potato hand pies. Those are vegan, by the way. Also want to talk about Tokyo Dining at Epcot. Now, this is where you're going to go in the Japan Pavilion if you want fresh sashimi and sushi made in-house in a beautiful setting. Again, because this Epcot restaurant is often overshadowed by other table service spots in the World Showcase, which we'll be talking more about later on in the video, you can often find last minute dining reservations here if you change your mind and decide you actually do want to sit down for a meal in the AC. Not to mention, Tokyo Dining is directly above the Mitsukoshi Department Store, which is one of our favorite places to shop, not just in Epcot, but in Disney World, period. So many unique Japan-based gifts and knickknacks to find here. Even if you don't end up buying a thing, it's still a fun place to explore. Floor. And then I also want to talk about Fairfax Fair. I'm not very nice to these locations. Fairfax Fair and the rest of the Sunset Ranch Market team over there in Hollywood Studios. But there's a big game changer that just happened at Fairfax Fair that you need to know about. So Fairfax used to be an open air quick service location that served interesting hot dog flavors super close to Tower of Terror. But now the menu has changed. Currently, Fairfax serves an assortment of savory waffle bowls, and these got our attention. You've got a few different bowl options to choose from. The buffalo chicken waffle bowl, the barbecue beef brisket bowl, the Korean barbecued pork belly bowl, and the plant-based soba noodle salad bowl. We liked each of these different options, but the star ingredient of the show for each of these were the creamy mashed potatoes found in the meat-based waffle bowls. Seriously, we told Fairfax Fair to step up to the plate or get off the field, and they met that challenge. So I applaud them and have now given this one substandard quick service a spot in our our best 
of lineup, though I still wish there were some more indoor seating options around these parts. Hearty waffle bowls in the heat can be a little much, but when there's a slight chill in the air, they're perfect. Next up, let's talk about where you want to go to meet characters. If you're going to Disney World for the first time or the hundredth time, you still want to know which character meals are the best character meals, right? And these are restaurants where you're going to go eat and meet your favorite characters at the same time. It's a nice solution for meeting characters without having to worry about standing in line for them at the parks. It's a pricey solution, but it's a solution. But since there are several character dining opportunities around property right now, especially that most of them return to normal in 2022, you'll want to choose the character restaurants with the best meet and greet opportunities and the best food together as one. So without further ado, here are our top four. Now, are there more than four character meals that are great? Absolutely. Is this video already super long? Yes. So these are our top ones, but we do have lots of videos that talk about many more character meals than this. We're going to start though with Garden Grill at Epcot. Of course, you know I love this space. How often do you get to meet Mickey Mouse, Pluto, Chip and Dale in a restaurant that rotates while you eat copious amounts of American foods right above the best ride in Epcot? I will answer that one for you very rarely, except for here. Garden Grill is an all you care to enjoy table service where the foods come to you, as do the characters. And while you're dining on things like fresh salad, barbecue roasted chicken, and creamy mashed potatoes, you'll also be able to see different viewpoints of the living with the land boat ride as you slowly rotate on past it from up above. And for those of you who are tired of me talking about this restaurant, let me reiterate that this is one of the only character meals where you're going to see those characters multiple times. It's such a tiny restaurant that they come around over and over and over again. So at other bigger character restaurants where you get to see them one time, here you're kind of going to get tired of these guys. Just saying. And when it comes to bang for your buck, that's a good thing. Next, let's talk about Artist Point, storybook dining with Snow White at Disney's Wilderness Lodge Resort. This is one that I never ever see a reservation come up for randomly. I don't ever see last minute reservations for Artist Point. I only ever see them at that 60 day mark at 5.45 a.m. So if you want to eat here, you need to book it immediately at your 60 day point. Anyway, this is where you can enjoy a fairy tale themed prefix meal inside an enchanted forest right inside Wilderness Lodge. During your meal, Snow White, Dopey, and Grumpy will stop by your table throughout dinner. And if you dare, you can also swing by to get a picture with the Evil Queen. So what does the fairy tale themed prefix meal actually entail? Well, expect to find options like Royal Prime Rib Roast, a stroll through nature gnocchi, magic mirror, slow braised veal shank, and the hunter's gift to the queen, which is very, very cool. And it's a smoking box filled with crackled maple popcorn and chocolate ganache hearts. The food presentations are just as fun as they are tasty. You will get a shared appetizer, you will get your own entree with the meal price, and you'll get shared dessert as well. And this is one of the only places you're going to get to meet Dopey and Grumpy too, by the way, so definitely take advantage of that. Next is Topolino's Terrace at Disney's Riviera Resort. Now, I'm a little bit on the fence about this one because it is expensive and it is not in a park, so it's not as easy to get to from your regular Disney day. But I will tell you that everybody on my team, everybody here at DFB absolutely adores this location, so it's definitely going on the list. This is on top of the Riviera. You're going to find Topolino's Terrace. It's an Italian inspired restaurant that has a totally different dining vibe depending on when you visit. For dinner, you've got a fancy signature meal complete with fireworks views in the evening and no characters. But for breakfast, you'll have a prefix character meal featuring Mickey, Minnie, Donald, and Daisy in their art-inspired costumes, as if they're ready for Epcot's Festival of the Arts at any time of the year. Breakfast options during the character meal include unique offerings like wild mushroom scramble, sour cream waffles, and a French toast brulee, which is made with seasonal compote and a choice of your meat. Kids can create their own breakfast at Topolino's Terrace. You'll have your choice of entree with options like scrambled eggs, Mickey waffle dippers, or the fruit and yogurt, which is then paired with your choice of two sides like roasted potatoes, a fruit cup, bacon, or sausage. Next up, we're headed to Akersu's Royal Banquet Hall at Epcot. One of the real best kept secrets of Disney dining is that you can find most of your favorite Disney princesses at Akersu's Royal Banquet Hall in Epcot's Norway. Princesses appear on a rotating schedule, so during your visit, you could encounter Ariel, Belle, Jasmine, Snow White, Cinderella, Princess Aurora, who's Sleeping Beauty, Mulan, and or Mary Poppins. Okay, I know Mulan and Mary Poppins aren't technically princesses, but they deserve to be here too. They're both princesses in our hearts. Akersu's serves 
all you care to enjoy family style platters, which include options like lefse, which is a soft Norwegian flatbread with cardamom and cinnamon butter, Norwegian meatballs, and a chocolate roulade with lingonberry cream. Think of lingonberry like a type of cranberry, kind of tart, but really tasty. Speaking of lingonberry cream, the next section of our top restaurants in Disney World for 2023, because of course we have to break it up into multiple sections because there's a lot of restaurants. So for 200 restaurants in Disney World, did you know that? It's true. Anyway, next on our list are the satisfyingly sweet spots to get the best food in Disney World. Now there's never a wrong time for dessert as far as I'm concerned, and there's definitely not a wrong time for dessert when you are on vacation. So which desserty places are going to be most worth your time? We've got a good list for you. We're going to start with Caramel Kusha in Epcot. If you need to satisfy your sweet tooth as you tour World Showcase, stop in the Epcot Germany Pavilion at this spot. You will smell it before you see it. There's so much caramel in here, from candy square assortments to cookies to caramel covered fruits, just to name a few. You can even watch some of the treats being coated in shop by the Caramel Kusha cast members. So you know this stuff is gonna be fresh. If the salted caramel gingerbread cookie sandwich is available, I highly recommend it. Even if you don't like gingerbread, I don't care. Still, get it. Over in the Magic Kingdom, you're gonna head to Main Street Confectionery. This is an old fashioned classic candy shop that you almost have to go to if you're in Magic Kingdom. It's got cookies and candies and all things sweet. The One Stop Sweet Store reopened in the fall of 2021 after a lengthy refurbishment, bringing with it a new look, new features, new treats, and even a new storyline featuring the sweetest spoon showcase. There are three unique features inside the confectionery. First, you've got the kernel kitchen where you can make customizable popcorn. Then you've got the color kitchen where you can mix and match candy in an aesthetically pleasing assortment for you. And lastly, you've got the glacier kitchen where you can order a frozen beverage, perfect for a hot Magic Kingdom day. And of course, big top treats in Magic Kingdom. If you are not wanting to deal with the crowds in the confectionery, head way to the back of the park to big top treats in the storybook circus section of of Fantasyland. Here you're gonna find classics like cotton candy and Disney character apples. Basically they have a lot of the same stuff that you're gonna find at confectionery without the weight. Zuri's Sweet Shop in Disney's Animal Kingdom is filled with bakery cases that hold several well-known Disney sweets with an Animal Kingdom twist. Look for fun choices like elephant and monkey caramel apples, hippo marshmallow wands, cotton top tamarind cake pops, and tiger frosted cookies that are more than good. They're great, get it? Okay, you'll also find some unique to Zuri's treats. In the past, we've tried options like dark chocolate Mickey infused with chili pepper and haystacks, which are tasty no-bake stacks of potato sticks and peanut butter. You've probably had them other places before, but these are a little bit different here. Now, important note, all of these sweet shops I've just listed for you, they're all available on Disney's mobile order. So if any of these candy stores have lines that are looking a little too intimidating, you can always go on your My Disney Experience app and place your order online. Then you can swing back by the shop when it's ready and avoid avoid having to wait in a forever long physical line. Just don't worry about all the dirty looks you're getting from the people who are standing in line who don't watch DFB Guide and didn't know about mobile order. Okay, back to the other sweet treat destinations that demand your attention. Gideon's Bakehouse in Disney Springs. This may be the most popular bakery on Disney World property, and it's certainly the most odd. I mean, where else do you have to reach through flames in order to grab your dessert? Even before the opening of the Gideon's Bakehouse location in Disney Springs back in 2021, Gideon's was famous among Orlando locals for creating incredible, fully loaded, nearly half pound cookies. Triple chocolate chip, pistachio chocolate chip, coffee cake cookie, all of them just as massive as the last. Now that it's entered into the Disney Springs scene, the Gideon's menu has expanded with more cookie options, including monthly limited edition offerings and cake slices and unique specialty coffees. You can also enjoy daily hot cookie hours, which happen daily between 2 and 3 p.m. and 7 and 8 p.m. Hot cookie hours are the only time you'll be able to get a hot Gideon's chocolate chip cookie topped with locally sourced vanilla ice cream. So if you're a big fan of all things ice cream sandwiches, you're gonna like these. Because of Gideon's endless popularity, you'll more than likely have to enter a virtual queue when you arrive. After you sign up for Gideon's virtual queue, you can hop around Disney Springs while you wait for your return text. A QR code that you can scan to enter the virtual queue should be on a sign located in front of the store. But if you have trouble finding it or signing yourself up, a Gideon's cast member will be nearby to help walk you through the process. Moving on to Beaches and Cream at Disney's Beach Club, resort, so this is the place to go for classic diner eats and gigantic ice cream sundaes. This table service location is decked 
out like a retro soda shop, complete with a jukebox and lots of pastel colors. Though the sundaes and shakes here are sizable no matter which one you choose, Beaches and Cream is especially well known for being the home of the famous kitchen sink, an eight scoop ice cream sundae made for sharing with the whole group. It's served with literally every topping in the house. Good luck, cause you're gonna need it. Beaches and Cream is a popular spot, so reservations do fill up for this place. However, you can always grab some ice cream or hard shakes and floats for adults at their to-go window if you're just looking for something quick and sweet to help beat the heat. This is located right between Beach Club Resort and Yacht Club Resort, so it's a quick walk from Epcot. And Swirls on the Water in Disney Springs. Attention all Dole Whip fans. Swirls on the Water specializes in the iconic Disney soft serve treat, serving up Dole Whip in its OG pineapple form alongside other swirled options like the lemon and blue cookie dough, for instance. They also serve Dole Whips in nacho form using waffle chips and fruity bursting boba pearls to sweeten the already sweet offering. And if you're having a hard time deciding on which Dole Whip flavor you want to commit to, consider ordering the Dole Whip Flight to get three different flavor combos instead. Now here's an important list you are not gonna wanna take for granted. Advanced dining reservations can be stressful and sometimes it feels like every Disney restaurant requires them, but some restaurants don't. So we've got a great list of where you don't need reservations and are still wonderful places to eat. I'm starting at Geyser Point Bar and Grill at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. This is an open air restaurant located near the Copper Creek Springs Pool at Wilderness Lodge. It kind of serves as their pool bar, but it's so much more than a pool bar. It's a cozy space and it blends two kinds of dining services. You can go either the lounge route or the quick service route. Both menus will provide you with completely different offerings from one another. The featured cocktail list at the lounge highlights beverages unique to Geyser Point, featuring spirits from Northwest distilleries. As far as food is concerned, you'll have options like handcrafted cheese and charcuterie, shrimp on a wire, the bison cheeseburger, and the cheesy barbecue brisket, which is unbelievable. This is over on the lounge side, by the way. And the best part of this place is, whether you want your food on the go or you want to sit back to admire the waterfront viewing for a bit, you don't have to worry about making a reservation. Just head on over and grab yourself a bite and a drink. Just note that if you're not staying at Wilderness Lodge, you should arrive to this hotel via Disney transportation. Sometimes it's very difficult to park at a hotel you're not staying at or don't have a reservation for a dining location there. Next is Three Bridges Bar and Grill at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. This is an on the water, literally, restaurant that's accessible via Three Bridges, hence the name, from various areas around the hotel. It was constructed on an island in the middle of Lago Dorado, which is Coronado Springs' 14-acre lake. The vibes here might feel casual, but the Spanish-inspired bar food gets a 10 out of 10. You can order queso, braised pork tacos, and a variety of other shared plates and burgers. One of my favorite is that Manchango cheese dip, of course. But big selling point of Three Bridges is their drinks. The robust beverage menu features specialty cocktails and sangrias, which can be ordered by the pitcher if you're really looking for a fun night. This one does have a walk-up wait list, and it doesn't open till about 4 o'clock, so right around 3.45, check and see if you can get on that walk-up wait list. And let's not forget about Disney's lounge scene. The lounge offerings around Disney World are often attached to a table or signature dining restaurant and offer items straight from the restaurant's main kitchen. Except for the Space 220 Lounge in Epcot, all lounges can seat guests on a first-come, first-served basis. We've got a whole video out now talking about a ton of our favorite lounge and bar offerings around Disney World. But just to give you a sample of what that list looks like, here are the lounges you might want to prioritize over even the main restaurants. Steakhouse 71 Lounge is attached to the contemporary Steakhouse 71 restaurant and features its own unique menu of small plates and drinks in a 70s retro themed space. Some of our favorite lounge bites here include the loaded macaroni and cheese, lump crab cakes, and the PB&J chicken wings, which may sound like a weird combo, but they sort of work. I'll try anything that promises me peanut butter. And don't forget at the Steakhouse 71 Lounge, you can get that incredible burger all day long. The Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge at Disney's Hollywood Studios gives guests the chance to sample some of the fun food featured at the signature Hollywood Brown Derby restaurant, including that famous Cobb salad, along with small plates and cocktails. And yes, you can get all this without an advanced dining reservation. Want to check and see if you can be added to the walk-up waitlist for this lounge before you get to the restaurant? Open your My Disney Experience app, tap on the tip board option, and check Hollywood Studios Dining Tip Board to see if you 
can join the walk-up waitlist virtually. Nomad Lounge at Disney's Animal Kingdom is right next to the park's signature restaurant, Tiffin's. And those of you who watch our videos all the time knew that I was going to talk about Nomad Lounge, don't you? Here you can order handcrafted cocktails and non-alcoholic specialty drinks and small plates like the Tiffin's bread service and those warm, sweet churros with vanilla crema. And they're totally gluten-free and the best churros in Disney World, hands down. This lounge literally has some of my favorite views in all of Disney World. This spot is so relaxing and welcoming, whether you choose to sit inside or on the outdoor covered patio. I used to definitely prefer the outdoor covered patio, but sitting inside on a very hot day is much better than sitting outside. And Tambu Lounge at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is catty corner to the Ohana themed restaurant and serves several appetizers alongside a full bar. The apps on the menu, like the barbecued pork ribs, the pot stickers, and the hot wings are savory and finger looking good, but we love ordering those off-menu items too, like the Ohana noodles and the Ohana bread pudding. Don't be afraid to ask your server and see if these options are still available during your Tambu Lounge visit. If they are, it'll be after 4 p.m. And don't skip out on the tropical drinks here either. You can get a rum and fruity Lapu Lapu in a real hollowed out pineapple, the rum, whiskey, and passion fruit based back scratcher, which actually comes with a genuine bamboo back scratcher. You'll make a lot of friends with that one. And so many other tropical inspired beverages that'll more than likely be topped with an umbrella or cherry or something that just screams, I'm on vacation. It's one of my favorite places to go when I first arrive at Disney World, and I'm really trying to do that transition from work to vacay. Enchanted Rose Lounge at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa is inspired by the live action version of Beauty and the Beast. And that means you can see Beauty and the Beast inspired decor pretty much everywhere, but it's very subtle. You got the signature glowing bar with a golden chandelier that is reminiscent of Belle's gown, a Cogsworth inspired clock, a Lumiere inspired candelabra, a Mrs. Potts inspired teapot. How many more references can you find while you're there? Probably dozens. While you're here, you can dine on gourmet bites like the crab macaroni and cheese and my favorite, the truffle fries. If you're looking for a crafted drink to go along with your evening eats, you can add one of the lounge's featured martinis like the floral tasting Island Rose or a classic grand cocktail. Non-alcoholic specialty beverages are also available for guests of all ages. This next list of restaurants are the one and done restaurants. Disney World is all about the spectacle of things. And while some restaurants you'll want to book because they are delicious, others you'll want to book because they look really cool, making it more about the experience than the sustenance. These four restaurants have an immersive atmosphere you'll want to see at least once just for the sake of the story, maybe not necessarily for the food. Just keep in mind that all four of these restaurants book up fast. So much like we mentioned for the new restaurants coming to the Disney World dining scene, you'll want to make sure you're making those dining reservations just as soon as your 60-day advanced dining reservation window opens up. Now, do all these restaurants have bad food? No, absolutely not. They have decent food, decent to good food, but it's not great food. All right, we're starting with Be Our Guest Restaurant at Magic Kingdom. If you ever watched Beauty and the Beast and thought, wow, I really wish I could be a guest there, minus the whole prisoner plotline and witch's curse and stuff like that, then Be Our Guest Restaurant needs to be a bucket list item for you to check off. Be Our Guest Restaurant serves prefix French-inspired cuisine inside of the Beast's castle, inspired directly by the beloved animated film, so much so that in one of the dining rooms, you can actually see the snow falling outside that is the actual animation from the movie. Anyway, it's completely immersive and has three differently styled rooms that you can be seated in. The Rose Gallery, the Ballroom, and the West Wing. We personally prefer dining in the West Wing because the theming is eerie and intimate and the Rose Gallery is pretty but not as cool as the other two and the Ballroom can get a little bit noisy since it's kind of got a cafeteria vibe to it in terms of like big echoing space. But in addition to its memorable setting, Be Our Guest Restaurant also made history by being the first restaurant in the Magic Kingdom to serve alcohol to guests when it opened in 2012. Now you can get a specialty cocktail, champagne, wine, beer, or cider to go along with your meal, but these drinks will come at a separate cost from that prefix menu price. Just remember to add that onto your budget. Next is Cinderella's Royal Table at Magic Kingdom. So what's it like to dine inside the Cinderella Castle, also known as the main icon of Magic Kingdom and Disney World in general? Once you enter the castle's waiting chamber, you'll walk up the winding stone staircase to the dining area, which is decked out with banner flags, vaulted stone ceilings, sparkling with light coming through the stained glass castle windows. Yes, if you're looking for a Disney experience, it doesn't get much more Disney than this. Food tends to be adequate here, if not kind of cutesy. I mean, the tangled themed when will my life begin chicken and pasta served in a little frying pan is adorable, 
but do I think it's worth $62? No, but that's not really what you're paying for anyway. You're paying to eat inside the castle, right? And to meet the princesses. Ever since the historic 2020 closures, Cinderella's Royal Table has been operating as a modified experience where you can only snap a quick pic with Cinderella, but that's pretty much it. However, we just learned that the regular character dining will resume here starting February 28th, meaning princesses like Ariel, Belle, Snow White, and of course Cinderella, sometimes Jasmine too, and Aurora will be able to come up to your table and chat and give hugs and sign autographs and take pictures once again. And you know what that means? Reservations are gonna be even harder to snag. Prices will also more than likely increase, but we'll let you know for certain when Disney announces more information closer to the princess's royal return. My advice, try booking a reservation for Cinderella's royal table around breakfast time instead of lunch or dinner. Not only will you still get the same royal views for a potentially cheaper price, but you may also have an easier time getting a reservation earlier in the morning rather than later on in the day. Next is Space 220 in Epcot. To the left side of Mission Space, you'll find Space 220, a highly immersive space-themed restaurant that takes place in the Centauri Space Station 222 miles above Epcot. This place is very cool. For starters, you begin your deep space dining adventure in a fully functioning Stellavator with a large digital screen that simulates a trip up to the space station. You actually see Epcot falling away below you. Then, once you're in the space station, you'll be surrounded by giant windows that allow you to look out at Earth, as well as the astronauts passing by. For reals though, this whole experience will make you feel like you really are dining amongst the stars. The menus here include prefix pricing for both lunch and dinner, and though they've got fun space-themed names like appetizer liftoffs and entree star courses and dessert supernova suites, the options here are pretty basic, aside from a few standout options like the Blue Moon Cauliflower, the Flat Iron Steak, and the Seared Tuna. But here's a fun fact, Space 220 has its own trading cards featuring custom illustrations and trivia facts about space exploration, food in space, and sky-high innovations at Space 220. They come with kids' menu items for guests ages 3 to 9 or with the order of a non-alcoholic beverage. Next, let's talk sci-fi dine-in at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Picture this, you're in a car, at a drive-in, watching silly mid-century B-movies about zombies and the blob when a server glides up to your table with a burger, shake, and some fries. This doesn't sound like it should be in Disney World, or even indoors, but Sci-Fi Dine-In is truly a time capsule where you can experience all the fun of a drive-in theater without the outdoorsiness and bugs and folks behind you that, for the love, won't turn their headlights off. One of the coolest parts about this restaurant is that you get to dine in a car. It's also one of the strangest parts, since that means you'll be sitting forward the whole time and not necessarily communicating with anybody else in your group, which could be just what you need at that point in your Disney vacation. There are a few options in the back of the restaurant with picnic-style tables, and if you'd prefer one of those to the car setup, especially if you need a high chair or somebody in your group is in a wheelchair, be sure to request it. Now there are some cars that are actually tables with the car parts at the front and the end, and that's another good place for folks with mobility concerns. If you know you want a car, request it for good measure when you check in at the podium. Now it's time to talk comfort food galore. If Disney knows how to do one thing right, it is comfort food and providing a lot of it. But which comfort food locations will give you maximum cozy vibes and a happy tummy? It's tough to narrow down the list of offerings to just a few, but I think we pulled it off. We're going to start at Scat Cats Club and Cafe at Disney's New Orleans French Quarter Resort. Ooh, <laughs> didn't get through the name of that one, right? And this place is about Ben. Beignets. Mickey beignets are available at Scat Cats Club and Cafe from early morning well into the late evening. Look for seasonal flavors like gingerbread around the holidays and pumpkin around Halloween time. You can also order yourself a round of boozy Baton Rouge beignets at the lounge. Also over on the lounge side, which opens up in the evenings, you'll have even more beignet offerings with savory options too, like the oyster beignet po' boy and the Scat Cats beignets with red pepper jelly, pimento cheese, and green goddess dressing. If you hit up the lounge on an evening during the weekend, you'll also get the chance to hear some live jazz music because the only thing that could make your beignet sweeter is some sultry tunes. Next, we're going over to Magic Kingdom to Liberty Tree Tavern. This is in Liberty Square. It's themed after a late 18th century home and divided into different rooms that reflect famous names from the United States Revolutionary War period, like Benjamin Franklin, Betsy Ross, George Washington, and Thomas Jefferson. Also, John Paul Jones is in there. The meal, called the Patriot's Platter, is served family style and is both hearty and plentiful. With this platter, you'll receive all you care to enjoy roasted turkey, pot roast, and even oven roasted pork. Lots of roast going on. And there's mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, seasonal veggies, and herb stuffing. But let's not forget the best part, 
dessert. Liberty Tree's ooey gooey toffee cake deserves a standing ovation. I've been talking about this since I first started this blog, this website, this YouTube channel, all of it. This is warm, buttery, drippy, has a big scoop of ice cream on top to make it all 10 times better. This is definitely more than the sum of its parts. Liberty Tree Tavern, still one of my favorites in Magic Kingdom. Moving on to Raglan Road at Disney Springs. Raglan is an authentic Irish pub right in the heart of Disney Springs. There are classic Irish Irish dishes presented with a contemporary twist, like the pull the box deep potato cake, the risotto nua, aka roasted butternut squash and wild mushroom risotto, and the now you're talking chicken sandwich. Raglan Road also often features live Irish music and dancing throughout the week. But word of warning, showtimes can get rather loud, so you may have a hard time chit-chatting with the other people in your group if you go during showtime. For dessert, you should definitely try the bread pudding, it's excellent. And staying with that Britishy theme, let's go to Rose and Crown Pub and Dining Room in Epcot. Rose and Crown in the UK Pavilion is fashioned after a neighborhood pub in Britain, so expect to see polished wood, dark interiors, rich tapestry fabrics, and leaded glass windows. You should also expect UK-inspired dishes and appetizers on the menu too, like scotch eggs, sticky toffee pudding, and shepherd's pie. Though you'll need a reservation for the main dining room, you can belly up to the pub at any time to order an ale, lager, or stout on the go. And now we're coming to the most comfort food of the comfort food, homecoming at Disney Springs. Right where Disney Springs Town Center and the landing area come together is where you'll find one of our favorite Southern style restaurants of all time, Chef Art Smith's Homecoming. This is all about the farm to fork cuisine, but you can find us ordering options like Art's famous fried chicken, the church lady deviled eggs, the fried chicken and donuts, and the banana pineapple hummingbird cake over and over and over again. You can also enjoy open air patio seating at the Connect Shine Bar and Social. Both the Shine Bar and Homecoming are well known for their down-to-earth vibes and their moonshine cocktails. And if you purchase one of the refillable squeeze bottles, you can bring your cup back to the restaurant or bar and refill it for 13 bucks, which is a pretty good deal considering a regular moonshine purchase will give you a smaller portion for the exact same price. Heading back to Magic Kingdom, we're going to go to a fast food location for this next comfort food spot. Gaston's Tavern is a counter service located near the Beast's Castle in Fantasyland. This place is a tribute to the oh-so-humble and highly unproblematic Gaston, who everyone roots for in the Beauty and the Beast films. Obviously kidding, Gaston's a big jerk, but hey, his shop makes good cinnamon rolls. And that's actually the biggest selling point for us, those warm, huge cinnamon rolls you can grab for a quick and cheap breakfast. But there are other quick options you can get here too, like LeFou's Brew, a non-alcoholic beverage made with frozen apple juice, a hint of toasted marshmallow, and topped with all-natural passion fruit mango foam, very sweet. Now our biggest tip for Gaston's Tavern, be sure to request extra icing if you order a warm cinnamon roll. Don't doubt me on this one, it is the best snack hack ever. Now this next restaurant you may not have heard of, especially if you're new here at DFB, Olivia's Cafe at Disney's Old Key West Resort. This is a beachy, breezy, casual, family restaurant in Disney's Old Key West Resort that offers classic American fare and items inspired by the Florida Keys. We could stuff ourselves silly here with options like the shrimp fritters, the Duval Street Burger, the key lime tart for dessert, it's incredible. But here's a little fun bonus tidbit for you. Olivia's brunch menu is a daily offering, making Olivia's one of the only spots in Disney World to offer brunch every single day. Way to go, Olivia's. Now, bring on the banana bread French toast. And Whispering Canyon Cafe at Disney's Wilderness Lodge. Now here's a restaurant packed with fun and pretty decent food. Whispering Canyon Cafe serves all you can eat down home grub served skillet style inside the Wilderness Lodge. And although I think eating at Disney is a fun activity in and of itself, the shenanigans from the Whispering Canyon servers add a whole new level of entertainment to this table service restaurant. Just don't be surprised if you're asked to join a stick horse race or you end up getting a bigger refill than you bargained for. Moving on to some classic restaurants. That's right. Sometimes signature dining just isn't fancy and expensive enough to satisfy your refined palate. Sometimes it takes something more fancy and more expensive to scratch that fine dining itch. Fortunately, Disney's got three restaurants that can transform your dinner into a high-class experience. Takumi Te, which stands for House of the Artisan in Epcot, brought fine signature dining to their Japan pavilion when it opened back in 2019. The dining room has five different 
rooms you could be seated in that are based off five different elements, water, wood, earth, stone, or washi paper. Why does the washi paper one throw me off? Is it just me? It doesn't matter, just side rambling. When Takumi Te closed during the historic 2020 closures, it didn't return until much, much later. In fact, we welcomed it back into the Epcot scene not too long ago on November 23rd, 2022. Upon its reopening, Takumi Te started offering a brand new menu consisting of two omakase multi-course meal options. The omnivorous meal is $250 per person and includes the diner's choice of Japanese A5 Wagyu steak, roasted duck, or grilled Chilean sea bass. And the plant-based meal for $150 per person includes options like shusai, which is a deep-fried tofu, and yasai tempura, a seasonal veggie tempura. The initial reopening phase is currently only serving a limited number of walk-up guests right now, with operating hours on Thursday through Monday from 5 to 7.30 p.m. But that doesn't mean this won't change later on in 2023, so we'll make sure to update you with reservation information as soon as it's announced via our newsletter. Next up is Monsieur Paul in Epcot. Little history lesson for you. Monsieur Paul replaced the critically acclaimed Bistro de Paris in the France Pavilion when it opened back in 2013. Bistro de Paris was the brainchild of three of France's most decorated chefs, Paul Bocuse, Roger Verge, and the late Gaston Le Nôtre. And Monsieur Paul continues to follow in the Bistro de Paris footsteps with its high-end French-inspired menu. Monsieur Paul is a multi-course prefix cuisine where guests will start with a glass of champagne before their meal, as long as they're of age, then proceed to indulge in French-inspired cuisines that feature escargot, seared scallops, main lobster, and meringue. The prefix menu at Monsieur Paul is $195 plus tax and gratuity and is not available for guests under the age of 10 years old. This is a change, by the way. Until Monsieur Paul reopened, it had welcomed guests of any age. Now you have to be 10 and over to dine there. And Victoria and Albert's at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. This is the creme de la creme of Disney fine dining. Victoria and Albert's at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa is a AAA, five diamond rated, multi-course, multi-hour, intimate dining experience. When making reservations, which are limited, you'll have your choice of three different dining rooms to choose from. The main dining room is available for only two seatings per evening and features the chef's tasting menu. This personalized menu is constructed about a week prior to your reservation and allows guests to choose anywhere between eight and 12 courses that they'll enjoy throughout the night. The Queen Victoria room is a slightly more secluded option here. It only accommodates up to eight guests at a time, spread out over four tables of two. And then there's the Victoria and Albert's chef's table, an ultra-exclusive three-hour dining experience where your party is seated directly in the kitchen. The chefs will craft their very own degustation menu for the guests in this room, which features all of their fresh and rare ingredients, all depending on the group's tastes. There is only one seating per night at the chef's table for parties of up to six guests and a minimum of four. Prices are pretty extravagant, to put it lightly. The dining room starts at $2.95 per guest. Queen Victoria room is at $3.75 per guest, and the chef's table starts at $4.25 per guest. And don't forget to add the wine and zero-proof pairings. Wine pairings start at $150 per guest for the main dining room and $200 for the other two rooms, while the zero-proof cocktail pairing starts at $110 per guest. Now let's take a complete 180 now. Let's say you want to save money instead of spending hundreds on just a single meal. Where are you going to go get good eats at unbeatable Disney prices? Here are four options that we hit up often when we're sticking to a budget without having to sacrifice the quality in the process. Let's start at Contempo Cafe in Disney's Contemporary Resort. While you're munching on food at this comfy little cafe, make sure to wave at the guests passing by on the monorail. You have a front row view of this transportation service cutting through the A-frame of the Contemporary Resort. Contempo Cafe has a wide selection of different foods like salad, sandwiches, and flatbreads, but we love it even more for its filled bakery display case with lots of baked goods and sweets to choose from all throughout the day. We also love coming here to escape the Magic Kingdom crowds for a bit. If it's lunchtime and all the Magic Kingdom quick service locations seem to be packed out, you can always take a 15 to 20 minute stroll over to the Contemporary and have a much more peaceful meal at Contempo Cafe instead, which by the way is a fast food location. Next is Roaring Fork at Disney's Wilderness Lodge, another fast food location that you would never guess was fast food when you eat the food. Roaring Fork offers a variety of hearty entrees and counter service basics along with grab and go options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a serene atmosphere with seating both indoors and out. 
It's hard to beat the chicken and waffles, but the 10 hour smoked pulled pork sandwich is also a solid choice if you're not already planning on grabbing barbecue someplace else. You'll even find specialty coffee drinks available like the Gold Rush Latte, which is a vanilla latte with added caramel. And if you're a fan of Disney cupcakes, you'll often find some really fun and unique options here that change with the seasons. Currently, you might come across cake treats like the Raspberry Bear Moose Cake, the Chocolate Campfire Cupcake, and the 50th Anniversary Petite Stump Cake. And we're staying in the wilderness with Trails End at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort next door. Surprised to see a table service restaurant on the budget-friendly list? Don't be. Trails End deserves to be here. Trails End Restaurant is a table service restaurant in Pioneer Hall where you'll find good food at moderate prices. Though it's not necessarily a short trek to get to Fort Wilderness if you're not already staying here, those family-style skillets for breakfast and dinner might still be worth the venture out there. For dinner, you can get skillet cornbread, Pecan smoked brisket, smoked chicken, pulled pork, roasted potatoes, green beans, buttered corn on the cob, chopped salad, and a mason jar dessert trio, all for $31.99 per adult. And breakfast is an even more affordable expense at $22.99 per adult. Not every day you see an all-you-care-to-enjoy dining option at Disney World priced under $40, bucks, before tax and gratuity, that is. Even if you don't want to go the table service route here, you can always hit up P&J's Southern Takeout next door instead, which is the attached quick service to Trails End. And of course, those Epcot Festival booths. Why choose one meal on the go when you could choose lots and taste your way around the world? Every year, Epcot hosts four seasonal festivals. Festival of the Arts, Flower and Garden, Food and Wine, and Festival of the Holidays. Along with exclusive festival activities and performances, you'll also see tons of limited time food booths pop up around the pavilions. For the most part, food is kept at a sampling size and costs around $5 to $10 per item. So you can make an entire meal out of just taste testing your way around different cultural options without having to fully commit to a full expensive entree. If you want to learn about the specifics of the Epcot Festival booths and what you can expect to find during your 2023 visit, we've got full digital festival guides that cover everything across all four festivals with tons of recommendations, reviews, price points, and full color pictures for you to check out. You can find these guides over on dfbstore.com. And if you want to know more about our favorite items and booths from the fests, you can check out our 2022 Best of the Fest videos to get yourself hyped for the offerings that could be available in 2023. Moving on to one of the most important categories on this list, where you can see the fireworks from a restaurant. There are seven different restaurants in Disney World that can potentially give you some epic views of the nighttime spectaculars over at Magic Kingdom and Epcot. And now that new fireworks shows have been announced for both parks in 2023, getting prime fireworks views to see the updated shows is gonna be more important than ever before. We're gonna start with La Hacienda de San Angel at Epcot. The goal of this location is not to reproduce heavy Tex-Mex you can find just about anywhere, but to offer authentic Mexican flavors straight from the market, including skillets, tacos, fresh corn tortillas, and a variety of margaritas. The giant floor-to-ceiling windows in the dining room look out toward the World Showcase Lagoon. However, that doesn't mean you're guaranteed a great fireworks view as long as you get a reservation here. Tables will fill up fast for fireworks viewing tables in the evenings, so make sure to get a reservation early, arrive early, and when you're checking in for your reservation, let your host know up front that you'd prefer to be sat at a table with fireworks viewing. The host won't always be able to make this happen for you, but it always helps your case to ask nonetheless. Next up is Ohana at Disney's Polynesian Village Resorts. Will I ever get sick of talking about Ohana? No, and I will also never get sick of eating there. Ohana is a glassed-in restaurant at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort with a huge cooking fire in the center of it all. This themed dining experience is known for its Hawaiian-style sort of churrascaria-type service for dinner, where you can dine on an all-you-can-eat feast of grilled meats, Hawaiian specialty sides like Ohana nudes, and the signature Ohana bread pudding for dessert. And if you time your meal right, you can enjoy viewing the Magic Kingdom fireworks from inside Ohana, too. The musical score that accompanies the show is even piped into the restaurant. Much like Hacienda, not every seat's going to give you prime fireworks viewings, so we recommend you book a late dinner starting around one hour prior to the Magic Kingdom fireworks to help better your chances definitely ask for a fireworks viewing table. We're going right next door to the contemporary resort again to California Grill. This restaurant has been recognized by the Michelin Guide as a Florida restaurant that truly masters the art of fine dining. And we totally agree. The signature restaurant has innovative chefs, market-inspired menus, and terrific food quality most of the time. 
but it also has some of the best Magic Kingdom fireworks views that any guest at the restaurant will be able to see, no matter where they're seated that night. Since California Grill is located on the 15th floor of the hotel, you'll be able to get a clear view of the show from either your seat or the restaurant's private balcony. So get your reservations early for this one. Next up is Toledo Tapas Steaks and Seafood at Coronado Springs Grandestino Tower. Here, you'll be able to try cuisines inspired by Spain, as well as choose a pour from the restaurant's extensive Spanish wine list. Massive windows with arch details allow diners to see for miles, so you could possibly catch glimpses of the park's fireworks from this vantage point. It may not be a picture-perfect fireworks spot, but this is still a unique perspective to see them from. And that expansive view across Disney World World is gorgeous regardless of if there are any fireworks in the sky shooting off or not. And Narcoosie's at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort and Spa. Currently, this place is closed as it continues to undergo some major refurbishments, but when it does finally reopen later in 2023 with its enchanted dining experience, this is another solid fireworks dining option for you to consider. And since the Narcoosie's building juts out over the Seven Seas Lagoon, you'll get a chance to see the nightly electric water pageant too. Now let's wash down all these best eats with some of the best Disney World drinks. Wine Bar George at Disney Springs is the only Master Sommelier owned wine bar in the state of Florida. The George in Wine Bar George is Master Sommelier George Miliates. Miliates was previously best known in the Disney culinary scene as a member of the opening team of the Contemporary Resort Signature Restaurant California Grill, so you know your drinks and food here are going to be good. This 210-seat bar offers more than 130 choices of wines by the bottle, the glass, and even the ounce. A menu of small plates and shareable entrees like the crispy mac and cheese bites, roasted pork belly, and house-made hummus complements the wine selection with terrific food. And if you're visiting on a Saturday or Sunday, the Wine Country Brunch is also an option available for you to make a reservation for to start the day off on a high note. La Cava del Tequila over in Epcot is tucked inside the Mexico Pavilion and provides a rich and warm atmosphere with over 200 tequilas and unique margaritas to choose from. We love to grab a table here for some good drinks and light bites and AC, but there's very limited seating in this cozy cave. However, you can still get your drinks to go to keep from missing out on the La Cava Marg experience, aka a rite of passage. And Tutto Gusto, which is right next to the Tutto Italia Ristorante in the Italy Pavilion, is a small and cozy cave-like wine bar located in the former Tutto Italia lobby space, extending toward Via Napoli. This place is themed like an Italian wine cellar, where the stone walls and fireplace add a nice homey touch. This spot has over 200 bottles of Italian wines for you to choose from, along with small plates to pair along with your drink of choice, and honestly, you can usually order from a lot of the menu choices at Tutto Italia as well. Paddlefish Rooftop Bar in Disney Springs may not be one of our favorite spots to dine in Disney Springs, but it is one of my favorite places to drink. The rooftop bar at Paddlefish offers gorgeous views of Disney Springs and the sunset while serving up all sorts of beers on tap and cocktails and other spirits to accompany you throughout the night. You can also get small plates up there too. Best of all, unlike the main restaurant, you do not need a reservation to visit the rooftop bar. Just let the host at the front know where you're going and head on up. And now we've made it to my favorite part of the video. This is AJ's favorite. These are my favorite Disney World restaurants at the moment that I personally recommend to add to your dining itinerary, just because everything about them is good. The atmosphere, the service, the food, all of it. Quick note before we get into these, the 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining is going to have so many more Disney restaurant recommendations for you to check out in case you're looking for even more options to choose from. You can find our updated guide for the new year filled with tips, reviews, and even activities on dfbstore.com. Make sure to type in code YouTube for some extra savings on your purchase. All right, we're going to start with Le Cellier Steakhouse in Epcot. This is a long-term favorite of mine, but if you're a long-term DFB viewer, you already know that. Le Cellier is an intimate cellar setting tucked into Epcot's Canada Pavilion. The dining room is rather small, but the options on the menu are mighty. You got your juicy steakhouse cuts, your Canadian cheddar cheese soup. You've even got those signature poutine selections here. But let's not overlook Le Cellier's bread service. Each bread portion represents different areas of Canada. Just ask your server about them. They'll let you know which is which. And while you're at it, consider adding a little Le Cellier ice wine flight to your meal for a super sweet Canadian specialty made from those frozen grapes. 
grapes. Next is Sana at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge. Honestly, I could eat anywhere in Animal Kingdom Lodge and be perfectly happy, but Sana's fusion of African and Indian cuisine made with authentic cooking methods like slow roasting and tandoori oven cooking never fail to amaze. But one of my favorite parts about Sana, besides its Indian style bread service with nine different dipping accompaniments, is the view. You can enjoy the ever-changing scenery of some beautiful African plains right outside the resort. And that scenery, by the way, is animals, real live animals, giraffes and zebras, some very curious ostriches from time to time. So definitely book Sanat during the day so you can see what's going on outside. While Sanat is a table service restaurant that serves lunch and dinner, the spot also offers the Sanat Kuam Shop breakfast in the mornings, which is a quick service experience where reservations are not required. And sorry, not sorry, going to Animal Kingdom Lodge again for this next one. Jiko, the cooking place, is a romantic and delicious restaurant with excellent gourmet food and a lovely and tranquil atmosphere. This is a signature restaurant, so it is on the pricier side. In the past, I've fallen head over heels for the filet mignon with macaroni and cheese, the braised short ribs, the bread service, we really, really like bread, and the seared scallops. During your meal, keep an eye on the lighting of the dining room. The colors of the sunset change on the back wall throughout your dinner. Now, I hate to list off Debbie Downer points in my favorites list, but it's important for you to know that Jico has a couple of tables lining a single side booth, which can be short on elbow room and less romantic feeling. I call it banquet seating and I hate it. So consider requesting a standalone table to avoid getting a little too comfortable with your neighbors. That goes for La Cellier too, by the way. Next is the Plaza Restaurant at Magic Kingdom. Now, I could have easily put this into the budget restaurant section because it is very affordable. This is over in Magic Kingdom and a lot of people don't even know it's there. You can enjoy some American classic eats here like the Plaza Club sandwich or homestyle meatloaf or if you're big on desserts you'll want to grab a classic banana split which comes directly from the attached Plaza ice cream parlor. One of my favorite things here by the way is the brisket mac and cheese. If they have it on the menu go for it. From some of the plaza tables, you'll be able to see the festivities happening on Main Street USA, like the Festival of Fantasy Parade, for instance. Granted, it's a skewed view, but a view nonetheless. Next is Gasparilla Island Grill at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. This is a new favorite for me. This fast food spot offers a diverse quick service menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Outdoor seating is cafe style and has a beautiful view of the Grand Floridian Marina with Cinderella Castle off in the distance. And indoor seating is also pretty nice, featuring roomy booths and tables in a peaceful and bright setting. Something I like the most about this place is that it's never very busy, but it still has great food. So you can always get a table and you can always just sort of sit here and chill out and relax. Now, when we're on the go, you'll find us grabbing specialty espresso coffees, the house-made macaroni and cheese, which big claim here is probably the best mac and cheese on Disney property. I said what I said. And whatever is fresh in the bakery display case that day, which is usually a lot of different sweet and seasonal stuff. Moving on to hoop de doo musical review at Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. I can't help it. I know the food isn't great, but it's so much fun here. This is an extravaganza of food and entertainment. It's a dinner show. And it happens to be the only dinner show available on Disney World property right now, unless you count like Coral Reef, which isn't really a show. Or I guess Beer Garden. I don't know. This is the only dinner show on Disney World property. The show and meal takes place in a huge barn complete with stage and musical numbers. And when it comes to the food, there are literally buckets of grub for the table to share, serving up an all-you-care-to-enjoy meal of fried chicken, ribs, mashed potatoes, baked beans, and drinks. And get this, unlimited beer, wine, and sangria are available for guests 21 years of age or older. The pricing for Hoop to Do all depends on which seats you choose, but you can find the different categories and make reservations on the Disney World website. I personally will always stand by booking category one or two. Category three is okay, but the seating is really not great and I don't recommend it. Over at Pineapple Lanai at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort is Dole Whips and Dole Whip Floats. That's it. That's the tweet and that's what you're going to find here. Pineapple Lanai provides a covered outdoor seating area where you can enjoy your tropical frosty treat. I love that they have multiple different flavors here and they have seasonal treats as well. And Trader Sam's Grog Grotto at Disney's Polynesian Village Resort right next door to Pineapple Lanai will have you questioning things like, wait, is my bar seat moving or am I shrinking? Trader Sam's Grog Grotto is a 51 seat bar with several interactive elements from special effects throughout the room to zany bartender antics. You never know what might happen when you order any particular drink. This is the closest to the Adventurers Club we've gotten so far. Trader Sam's also offers food along with its extensive cocktail menu with items like Kahlua pork tacos and Thai chicken flatbreads. 
The same menu is featured outside at Trader Sam's Tiki Terrace, which is more likely to have lingering available seating than Grog Grotto will have. It's just not gonna have all the zany happenstances happening out there like you'll find on the inside. If you wanna make sure you get in on all the fun, plan on getting in line for Grog Grotto early. It opens daily around 3 p.m., so get in line for this one 20 to 30 minutes beforehand to make sure your name gets added to the wait list. Is there a restaurant you think should have been added to this list? Believe me, there are so many that got cut, and I'd probably agree with you they should be here too. So let me know in the comments because there's always room for more 2023 recommendations. And don't forget to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash best eats 2023 for the complete write up of everything we talked about today. Think of it as the ultimate cheat sheet. Thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.